Oh guys, if you're ready, welcome to Meet the Wolf Nerd. My name is Michael and I'm Product Manager at the A. Schneider Group. Here in Meet the Wolf Nerd, we work together to propound solutions to the everyday challenges confronting piping and design engineers, purchasers, maintenance guys and HSC engineers. This is made possible by our team of experts with many years of experience in the field of instrumentation and DBB loads. In today's video, I will be discussing the growing challenges of humidity emission control in the oil and gas industry and how a valve supplier answers to these growing challenges. But just before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get notified of our interesting videos. Fugitive emissions have become a major challenge as they are capable of harming the environment and even contribute to global warming. So what exactly are fugitive emissions? Fugitive emissions are the emissions of vapor gases from pressurized equipment, mainly because of leaks or other irregular releases of gases mostly from industrial activities. In simple terms, fugitive emissions occur when an unintended leak of a hazardous substance takes place in a system and the discharge falls to be contained in a stack, vent or duct. Fugitive emissions are primarily caused by poor servicing, component failure or breakdown in the normal industrial process. To better understand what effects this emission has on workers, the environment and the society, it is important to talk about how emissions escape into the air. Now, when a system containing certain refrigerant leaks, the substance it releases causes significant damage to the atmosphere. In most cases, such refrigerant gases are not broken down the atmosphere and enter the stratosphere. Thereby, they are destroying the protective ozone layer over time. As soon as fugitive emissions are released into the air, it comes with other risks and hazards. For instance, emissions of unstable substances such as benzene from oil refineries and chemical plants pose a significant health risk to both workers and local communities. Moreover, in situations where massive amounts of flammable gases and liquids are contained under pressure, leaks in such cases also increase the risk of fire and explosion. There is no doubt that fugitive emissions can contribute substantially to climate change as well as pollution. So how can this be controlled? As I mentioned earlier, fugitive emissions are a result of leaks from pressurized process equipment, which typically occurs through mechanical seals, pipe connection, valves, as well as other related equipment. Fugitive emissions also take place at evaporative sources such as storage tanks and wastewater treatment ponds. Due to the high number of possible leak sources at large industrial facilities, coupled with the difficulty in identifying and fixing some leaks, fugitive emissions can be a significant percentage of total emissions. Even if the quantity of leak gases is small, it can have a serious impact on a worker's health as well as the environment as a whole. And to tackle this menace of fugitive emissions, the European Union, the United States and other countries have started focusing on tracking fugitive emissions for certain industries. To achieve these process facilities, operators conduct regular leak detection as well as repair activities. These routine inspections of process equipment with gas detectors can be useful when it comes to identifying and estimating the leak rate in order to take the appropriate corrective action. So when it comes to reducing fugitive emissions, it's recommended that process facilities utilize industrial valves with special sealing technology. The type tested by ISO 15848 standard. And in most cases, these valves are not used in plants for instrumentation valves and manifolds. To do this, all process valve manufacturers aim at fugitive emission standards with maximum emission control. So if you're considering fugitive emission control, I recommend you to go for a standard. So the next question is, what is this standard? It requires expertise to understand the different requirements of the fugitive emission standards. Direct comparison of these standards is not that straightforward. The fugitive emission standards can be estimated as a more or less strict standard for the valves based on the analysis of fugitive emissions and extensive laboratory-based research knowledge. That information can be transferred to a valuable end-user benefit. There are several common valves-related fugitive emission standards, 
like normative standards, for example, API 6.2.4, FCI minus 9.1 minus 1, international standards, for example, ISO 15.8.4.8, and user specs, for example, the shell specification 77.312, or some of them are set by a country's legislation, like, for example, EPA 40, parts 60 and 63, or the German TR Luft. So, how can you ensure to buy the best product available? To ensure getting the best valve for your fugitive emission control, you have to consider three major points. The first point is to pay close attention to how the valves are tested and always to compare the manufacturer's certificates. Some manufacturers conduct the tests at room temperature or reduce temperature and pressure only. It is obvious that the stress on the valve packing and the material is much higher at real operating temperatures of up to 200 degrees Celsius, which are around 329 degrees Fahrenheit, and under pressure of 420 bars, which are around 6000 psi. The second thing you should take care of is the number of cycles. You also compare the number of cycles the valve has gone through to pass the test under the test temperature conditions. And the third point it's also noteworthy to mention that you should always go for quality when it comes to choosing the right bulbs for your facility. State-of-the-art design techniques achieve a high peak of seal integrity and maximum process compatibility. And good manufacturers can provide flexible configurations with a vast variety of body types and connections and valve technologies for all kinds of critical piping applications. A more detailed explanation about the ISO 15848 standard in comparison to the German TR Luft can be found in our next ISO FE video, which will be released soon. So, whenever you have a challenge with a project, just come up with the problem. You can immediately contact us via the comment function below, and then we will advise you individually. And if you like this video, leave us a thumbs up for that and share with your friends and on social media. Thank you guys for watching. Till next time, I remain Michael, your Waldner.